this video, we're going to add to our list of motion and orientation sensors and take a look at gyroscopes. Gyroscopes measure the speed of rotation around one or more axes. Connected to the Arduino, they can be used to control the orientation of quadcopters and robots or to detect body motion with wearable sensors. The gyroscope I'm going to use in this video is the L3GD20H. It's probably the most popular gyroscope for Arduino projects. Here's my L3GD20H gyroscope. The sensor itself is really small. That's this chip right here. The sensor chip itself runs on 3.3 volts. But this breakout board has a voltage regulator, so you can power it from the Arduino's 5 volt power supply. The L3GD20H can communicate with the Arduino over I2C or SPI. Here are the SDA and SCL pins for I2C. SPI uses the SDA and SCL pins, plus the SDO and CS pins. I'll be using I2C in this video. There are also two hardware interrupt pins. Here are the directional arrows that tell you how the sensor's axes are oriented. On this sensor, the x-axis points this way. The y-axis points in this direction. And the z-axis comes up 90 degrees from the plane of the PCB. The L3GD20H measures the rotational speed around the x, y, and z axes. Here, the y-axis is shown as the vertical axis. X points to the right, and Z extends upwards. The gyroscope outputs rotational speed values for each of these axes. The sensor's raw output can be converted to degrees per second or radians per second. Now let's look at how to connect the L3GD20H to the Arduino. Then we'll see how to get readings from it. I'm going to connect the sensor with I2C since it only uses two data wires. Connect ground to ground and VCC to 5 volts. The sensor's SDA pin connects to analog pin A4 on the Arduino. And the SCL pin connects to analog pin A5. Once the sensor is connected, we can install the library. I'm going to use a library called the L3G library from Pololu. You can download it from GitHub. After you get that installed, you can start programming. In this sketch, we're going to output the raw sensor readings to the serial monitor. The first thing we have to do is include the libraries. We're using I2C, and anytime we use I2C, we have to include the wire library. We also have to include the L3G library. Then, we create an object called Gyro, from the L3G class. Next, we initialize the serial monitor. We also initialize the I2C protocol with wire.begin. Then we have an if statement with the init function as a condition. The init function initializes the gyroscope. This library also works with other gyroscopes. The L3G4200D and the L3G-D20 are supported too. The init function detects the type of gyroscope that's connected to the Arduino and its I2C address. If the gyroscope type is not detected, the init function returns a false value. In that case, this not operator makes the condition true. So we print some text that says, failed to auto detect gyro type followed by an empty while loop that continues on indefinitely. If the gyro type is detected, the init function returns a true value. But the not operator makes the condition false, so the program skips this section. So only if the gyroscope type is successfully determined can we proceed with the rest of the sketch. Then, we call the enable default function. This turns on the gyroscope and sets its full scale range to plus or minus 245 degrees per second. The setup's all done, so now we can move into the loop. Now we get the sensor's raw output by calling the read function. 
The sensor outputs a 16-bit value for each axis. The reading for the x-axis is stored in gyro.g.x. The reading for the y-axis is stored in gyro.g.y. And the reading for the z-axis is stored in gyro.g.z. So in this block, we're just printing some text that says x, y, and z, followed by the value for each axis. Then we delay for 200 milliseconds to make the output more readable. Let's see what this looks like. I've got my gyroscope connected to my Arduino here. And the values for each axis are coming in. On my sensor, the x-axis is pointing this way. So if I rotate the sensor around that axis, the x values should change. You can see the x-axis values go up and down when I rotate the sensor. The y-axis is pointing to the right. So when I rotate it this way, the Y values change. The Z axis points up, so if I rotate the sensor like this, the Z axis values change. So the sensor appears to be working correctly, but these are just raw 16-bit values. Let's convert these to something easier to work with, like degrees per second or radians per second. All we need to do is apply some conversion factors to these raw values. On page 10 of the datasheet, there's a table for the sensor's mechanical specifications. The SO specification gives the conversion factor for each one of the sensor's sensitivity ranges. You can change the sensitivity of the sensor. I won't cover that in this video, but the library's documentation shows you how to. By default, the library sets the sensitivity at plus or minus 245 degrees per second. At this sensitivity, there are 8.75 milli degrees per second per rod digit. This is the conversion factor for the plus or minus 245 DPS range, the plus or minus 500 DPS range, and the plus or minus 2000 DPS range. This sketch will get the raw sensor output for each axis and convert it to degrees per second or radians per second. The first half of the sketch is the same as the raw output sketch we saw earlier. But in the loop section, we convert the raw measurements to degrees per second and radians per second. We have three separate float variables, xdps, ydps, and zdps. Each one is set equal to the raw output for each axis, gyro.g.x, gyro.g.y, and gyro.g.z. Then we multiply by the conversion factor, 8.75, to get the readings in milli-degrees per second. Then we divide by 1000 to convert from milli-degrees per second to degrees per second. To get radians per second, you just multiply the degrees per second variable for each axis by pi over 180 degrees. We store the result in new flow variables, x rad, y rad, and ZRAD. Now we just need to print the variables. There's some text that says X, Y, and Z, then a serial print of each DPS variable, X DPS, Y DPS, and Z DPS. Okay, now let's see what this looks like.
Okay, so now the sensor's output is in degrees per second. This should be a little easier to work with. In the next video, we're going to look at a sensor that combines all three of the motion sensors we've seen so far. A gyroscope, accelerometer, and a magnetometer. The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller, or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture and displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder.